Well, hi, I'm Connie Boulay. I've been quilting for a long time, uh, almost 50 years. And that was my first quilt. My second quilt was about 40 years late, uh, 40 years ago. So that was um, about 10 years after the first one. So it took me a while to get totally into it. And then uh, I started making them a lot. When I moved to Colorado Springs, I took my first quilt class. Then I took my second quilt class, which was this quilt behind me. And I learned a lot. I call that basic and beyond because I started off doing a basic nine patch and then learned drafting and well, kind of knew drafting already a little bit. I was a math major and drafted the Mariner's Compass that's in the center and several of the other quilt blocks too. And the most challenging one was the one right there. <laughs> It's called Castle Wall. So then I started, um, so I drafted a lot of things originally by hand, and then I started using Electric Quilt, which was a quilt software program. And it was debuted in 1991. Uh, it's the first one, and now they're up to EQ8, so I keep doing that. One of the first questions I often get is, what comes first, the pattern or the fabric? And for me, it can be either one, but one of them has to come first. And most recently I've been trying to use fabric I have. So I'll pull out a bunch of fabric and say, what can I make with this? Um, I often draft it in electric quilt, no matter if I have a pattern or not, because my first quilt teacher said, patterns have mistakes. You always have to double check. And I have found Quite a few mistakes so I always double check and I always um, go through a pattern with the eye of does this make sense and then I start picking fabrics out for each of the elements of the quilt the blocks the sashing the setting pieces the borders and I start cutting and sewing each block um, I have a design wall and I have design boards and I just about always lay the whole block out cut before I start piecing it together and then I put things back as I'm piecing them to make sure that they don't get out of order because I'm really not a big fan of ripping things out and that's what happens when I don't do that but recently I I had to rip something out and I actually ripped the fabric along with it. So I had to replace the whole part of the block. That was unhappy. So uh, I try not to do that. So then I uh, arrange the layout, rearrange the layout. A lot of times, most often, and you'll see this when we get into the bed turning, my quilts are not the same block over and over and over and over again. I consider myself mostly a traditional quilter, but I don't make the same block 25 times in the same colors and call that a quilt. That's, to me, that's not fun. So for me, the most fun is picking out the different fabrics. So that's what uh, I tend to, even if I'm making the same block, I'll often use different fabrics for each one. Uh, then we put it all together, piece it all together, add borders, baste it and quilt it. And I do my own quilting 99% of the time. I have actually two quilts on the bed that I'm gonna be sharing that I did not quilt, but most of the time I do quilt it. What I was gonna show you was how I made this quilt that's not this one, but the one I Ooh. So we'll just regroup. Okay. Some of so, you might have seen this quilt in our email. We sent out, I sent out a little snippet of this one because it's so gorgeous. So this one is a, a classic example of um, lots of different fabrics. More fabrics, more is more, as one of my quilt instructors said, pollinatal skirt. 
And that's her mantra is more is more when it comes to fabric. And so this one has a lot of different fabrics and trying to keep it cohesive because I do like cohesive quilts, even though I do like lots of fabrics in my quilt. I went mostly with one particular um, fabric designer. Well, actually it was two ladies who designed it, but um, they're, they're fabric lines. And then I added more from scraps. And a lot of the things that I added uh, had meaning for me. So right there, you can't see it, but there's a deer there um, that I got from some fabric when I went on a cruise to Alaska. We stopped in Sitka and I got some fabric there because I get fabric everywhere. And so that reminds me of Sitka. Up here, there's a little frog that I made um, my daughter a vest with that fabric. So she had a little frog vest when she was about eight. So a lot of the bits in here that are not from those fabric lines are um, have meaning for me. So it, it brings back memories when I make these quilts. It, it was made up in sections. There's, um, there's these stripes that go through the whole quilt. And as I was putting it all together, I was trying to make sure that the blocks and the stripes did not argue with each other so that they were distinct. And I didn't use the same fabrics in the stripe as I did in an adjacent block. And so I'm not sure what else to say about that. <laughs> So we will continue now with the how to put a block together. So when I'm making a block, I start off I start off with a picture of the block. I, I create these in electric quilt. And so then I, um, I often print out the block I'm making, not always with the fabrics in there because I don't always know what fabrics I'm gonna be using, to be perfectly honest. I, I do a representational block of what I think might look good. And then I start pulling fabrics for it and change my mind. This particular one, I'm using these fabrics. And as I said, the first thing I do is I put it out on the design board. Um, the center squares are, I don't make them as squares and then sew them together as one, one at a time. When I'm making lots of blocks, I will in this particular case, I made strips. And then I cut the strips. So I end up with two squares sewn together, even though they didn't start off as squares. And then I sew the two squares together. Then in this particular case, I'll sew this to this and this to this and press it and that to that. And I'll end up with that. Now it's just a matter of putting, I just repeating the process almost. And this is why I get bored doing the same thing over and over again. When I'm making this quilt, and I am making this into a quilt, um, I usually piece four or five blocks at the same time. So I'm doing um, just kind of a continuous piecing rather than sewing a thing breaking the thread, sewing the next one, breaking the thread. So I sew those four together onto that. And end up with that. Oops. And again, just sew four together. And end up with that. So 
careful of water. And then it will turn into a block. And you put them all together and you get a, a pattern that comes out, the secondary pattern that comes out that you don't see when you look at that original foot block. And this is going to be a pineapple when it grows up. When I started this, and this is why I actually designed myself, I looked at a pineapple and they have all these little swirly things in there. When you look at a real pineapple, it's a little more obvious. And I thought, well, <laughs> the snail's trail block would do that. So I, and I'm, I'm making this for someone who loves purple and pineapples. So she's getting a purple pineapple. And it's not all together yet, but you can kind of see the, the green leaves at the top. It'll be wider. Um, I don't have All the blocks made yet. I only started this Tuesday. <laughs> Connie, that's so cool. I never would have expected you were going towards a pineapple. <laughs> yeah. See, this is why we had to have some surprise reveal. <laughs> I and, love this because I know a lot of the quilts that you made have come from patterns from different designers. And but this one is a pattern that you do you do you draw it on graph paper or how do you start? I did it in an electric quilt. Oh, okay. So it's an electric software and um, and this pattern or this picture was what came out of electric quilt. So that's what it will more or less look like. These were just greens. I didn't use the same green. I just threw some greens in there. But the, the yellow and the purple are actually the fabrics that I'm using just because I could get pictures of them and knew what I was going to be doing. And I played around using a black background or then the white background and I like the white background better so then we so that's that's something that's just the same thing over and over and over again but what I typically love to do is do lots of different blocks all different you know, I like that. <laughs> and use lots of different fabrics. So when I'm using lots of different fabrics, I pull together my palette and in this particular one, I got some of the reds that I'm using. I've got several here. And then I've got backgrounds. And I've got more backgrounds, lots of backgrounds, and blues. So this is going to be mostly a red, white, and blue but the whites are go from white to tan and the um, reds go from red to pink and the blues are several different shades of blue. So I thought I'd show how I picked. So from those fabrics, I'm going to be making this block. And from those fabrics, I cut out pieces. <clears throat> those fabrics. And I cut out some backgrounds. So this is the first thing I, I do as I pick the, the thing that I think is going to be the biggest impact that I wanna work around. So in this case, I decided that the backgrounds I was gonna pick out first. 
And then I was going to pick out something to use as the diagonal through the background. And so for this one, I decided red would, no, I think I decided this one's going to be, this red would show up nicely against, or maybe even this red. This red would be better. So, and then I had some blue backgrounds and I have to do three across. So I'm thinking the tan backgrounds would look nicely together in a sequence of three. Now I also had some backgrounds that I have to make six of these for this quilt that were lighter. And those are gonna be a sequence of three as well, but they're gonna to be together in the lighter as a lighter grouping. And then I needed to put some um, now these were red, but they don't um, but in here I made it blue. They don't have to be the same color. This is a scrappy quilt. You can you can change things up. So I picked some reds to go in that one. And the center bit is going to be blue. So we'll have something that looks like is not fast. Quilting is not a fast sport. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's slow, especially the way I do it. That pineapple quilt, how long will that take start to finish, you think? Well, I want to deliver it on Mother's Day. So, <laughs> so you have a deadline. <laughs> so, so this one is kind of the pineapple is taking priority since I decided Based on doing this today um, and the fact that I decided to go visit this person in May, um, I just, and I needed something that was gonna be the building blocks part of this demo, I decided to start that and get it done for my visit in May. I, 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 my, my deadlines are sometimes flexible the only ones that aren't really flexible are baby quilts. I, I kind of need to get the baby quilt done before <laughs> the baby outgrows it. <laughs> um, so that, that, that one would be six of these, but they're all going to be different. And you can see I'm using. Can I have a different sign board? Can you see the sign board? Okay. Um, and then, um, so I'll make those and get working on this block sometime. Maybe in between working on those pineapples, because as I said, they can get kind of boring. I only need to make 42 of them, but I've got a good start. So the next thing, the next block I wanted to show was putting together something that's gonna look like this. And if I could, so Wait, I've got, yeah nine blocks they're all the same block but they're all different fabrics and when i put this up in eq i didn't really play around too much with how my fabrics were going to be i just made sure i had nine that were all different and it's essentially this block so it's got two fabrics that can have more but at least two and this one i really have I started cutting out fabrics, but I haven't decided which ones are going together. So on this one, I've got fabric hands that don't work. Okay, I had to relearn how to quilt because I messed up my thumbs, both of them. And I um, can't feel as well as I used to be able to. <laughs> It makes it harder to grab fabric. So I've got, this is one set. I, like I showed earlier with the, the strips of fabric, when I make these 
four patches because there's four squares, they call it a four patch. Um, I'll strip piece the light to this dark and then I'll cut it up and then I'll sew those together. So rather than cutting out eight single squares, I'll cut out two strips. So it might be this one or it might not be. I haven't decided yet. I'm not thrilled with that. Maybe this one would be better. So I kind of like that one better. So maybe we'll make one out of that. Until it's sewn, it's not cast in concrete. I, I, I change my mind all the time. So then we have some red ones, a red one that's um, got a little stripe in there. And what will I use for that? Um, I don't know, <laughs> but let's see. Maybe, maybe this one, maybe not. Oh, ooh, this one might be better. I like this one better. This is what I do. I, I, I put things up and I say, oh, I don't like that as much. I'll change my mind. So I go through this. This is why it takes me forever to make quilts is because I have to make all these decisions. And, but I do, and I love it. That's the fun part, but it does take a while. Um, so basically that's all I wanted to show in this room. So do we have any questions so far? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> well, they're mainly from me, but I, that's what I want. <laughs> I, I was wondering what kind of board you have up there. Is there an adhesive on there? Is this it that? Oh, this board? Mm -hmm. This is flannel. Um, so I made these, but um, you can buy them too. But I just took, well, I, I saw, you know, when on the internet, there's all sorts of tutorials and you can find do-it-yourself do everything. So this is a do-it-yourself design board. And it is actually... Um, cardboard from a nice heavy duty box that we got in the mail. You know how we're getting so much mail these days. I repurposed some of my big pieces of mail. I got a new toaster oven. This came from a toaster oven box. Uh, <laughs> gotta, you know, <laughs> recycle. So, and then this is um, flannel. Actually, this is not flannel. This is um, batting. So it's leftover batting. When I make it go and I'm, after I finish quilting and I trim off the excess batting because the batting is there's oh you always have a piece left over and so this is leftover batting and then this was a two and a half inch strip that I I made a quilt that used a lot of two and a half inch strips um, and I had some left over because you always have fabric left over. That's why you have a scrap bag and can go and read your scrap bag for that quilt that I showed earlier where I was reading the scrap bag to get all these cute little things to go into some of those pieces. And um, so you folded it and I sewed it. I didn't use matching thread. So you can see I sewed it to keep the, it from unfolding and then I had to bend it together. It, <laughs> But it works. <laughs> it works well. Yeah. Nice, nice to experiment. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, you and I talked about this earlier today. For those of us who are not quilters and just curious about it, I, I asked from the same pattern, can different quilters make just an infinite amount of variety? And you talked a little bit about depending on the, the fabrics you choose and the vision you have for it, it mm -hmm. can vary from a single pattern. Can you talk a little about that? Sure. So um this pattern I'm making now with all my reds and blues and whites, that is from a pattern. And I looked at different people making the same, look, look for ideas. I saw one lady, well, I didn't see the lady, but I saw the quilt that I'm pretty sure it was the lady who made. There are male quilters, so you can't just say the lady. There are quite a few <laughs> male quilters and some very good male quilters. And they... Um, they were just using red and white. So everything that was a background was white and everything that was a color was red. So it was a red and white quilt, which is a very popular 
uh, thing to do is to make a red and white quilt or a blue and white quilt or a two color quilt um, with, uh, I've seen a lot of red and white, a lot of blue and white, white, a lot of green and white. I've seen purple and white, but not as many. And possibly because purple fabric, fabrics are harder to find, that there are a lot of purple people out there. So um, I know a few of them, <laughs> my sister's one, she would love a purple and white quilt. Um, or you can, there's so many different fabric lines out and you can, or you can just pick your own fabric um, and not go with the line. Uh, the one that I'm doing with the red, white, and blue, ish, whitish, uh, is started off with a fabric line. And the first quilt I made with it is on the bed that you'll see later in the bed training. And I bought a lot of that fabric. And I had lots left over because that's what I do. And <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, and then I liked it so much, I thought, well, I don't have enough for another quilt. So I'll buy some from another line and, and combine it with what I already had and make a quilt. And then I bought some more from a different line that they also did and a different line that they also did. So I have about, I think, five different lines of fabric that are going from the same designer. And then I go into my stash and pull out more reds, more whites, more creams, more blues, more whatevers and make it so it's not so much. And then other people do um, do totally different things. Some people make it a lot scrappier. The quilt that this is, that the, this is a pattern that is the same designer as Gypsy Wife and you can't really see it very well, but that's the original quilt. Mm. And you can see that it's, very blurry in my opinion so but that's just my opinion she loves it and and that's the thing it's your it's your quilt you can make it any way you want it's your quilt there might be quilt police but we just don't we ignore them and that is a term. <laughs> well said i have a question in the chat connie um from ann who wants to know when you say you use all types of fabrics do you mean you use cotton rayon wool etc or just different patterns and colors of cotton mostly i use cotton in my bed quilts but i also have made quilts with wool my very first quilt i did not know you were supposed to use cotton and this was back in 1973, 72, 73, somewhere in that time frame. And there weren't a whole lot of cottons around. And at the time I was sewing clothes, I made all my clothes, all my daughter's clothes, all my husband's clothes. I sewed clothes. And, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I had scraps. So I made a Sunbonnet Sioux overall bill and they wore the same kind of clothes we did, which in that case was polyester double knit. <laughs> so it's 1973, right? <laughs> Leisure suits, if you remember that, you probably don't, anybody out there, but a few maybe. Um, but I remember it. And so I, I made, um, I made, uh, Sunbonnet Sue was holding some balloons and I made my nightgowns out of a Trico fabric that was shiny. So I used that for the balloons. I, um, I used whatever I had. But, uh, and then when I made the second quilt, I, uh, I did find it. I did find quilt stores then. They didn't, they didn't have any quilt stores around where I was when I was learning to quilt. And in fact, um, my friend and I were the blind leading the blind, and she was making her first quilt out of old silk ties. So <laughs> you can make them, and, and crazy quilts were made with velvet, rayon, not so much rayon because they didn't have rayon, but silk, um, cotton, uh, whatever fabric they had went into crazy quilts in the Victorian times. So you can, uh, they just, since I make quilts mostly to be used, which means washed, I try to use things that are washable. Makes sense. Okay. 
Makes sense. Any, any other questions before we go to the bedroom? Uh, <laughs> I have some comments. Uh, someone says bulletproof polyester. Then I see I was 18 in 1973. I remember double knits well. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> and just FYI for everyone, uh, I, we do show these programs on YouTube afterwards and people don't always see the Zoom chat. So that's why I'm reading some of these questions out. Does anyone have any other questions for Connie before we go to the bed turning where she's going to show off many of her quilts and tell some stories? Not right now? Okay, well then let's let's head on. In I'm gonna move to the rooms. So this is the first quilt I wanna show. Uh, it is not so much pieced like I showed you in the other room, but there is some piecing in this particular case. Um, all of the words that you see on here, this is the X-Files quilt. Um, uh, there was, there's a group out, um, <laughs> On the internet. It's called Fandom and Stitches and they do a lot of fandom quilts. So they did a quilt that was the X-Files. This is some of the blocks that were put out and uh, I, I went along and did it. You can see on this one it's pieced but it's also got a lot of embroidery and in this particular case I thought I was going to do the embroidery by hand and I tried to stick a needle through this fabric, which was a very dense batik. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. So <laughs> I modified it and this is a hand guided machine applique. So I went through and I marked my pattern on, on, on it and I went over it with my sewing machine and needle. And can you-, you wanna zoom in? Yeah, I wanna zoom in on Okay, so move it down. yeah, so this was well, we'll talk about this one. So, this is uh, I want to believe with our UFO, and in this case, UFOs are unidentified flying objects in the quilt world, UFOs are unfinished objects. And then we had Mulder and Scully as one of the, the blocks, and this one I actually did twice trying to get it. To look good before because it was the first one I was learning how to do it. So that's the first quilt. The second quilt is the name of it was the Shipshwana Mystery Quilt. And Shipshwana is a town in uh, <laughs> Iowa, Pennsylvania. No, it's not, it's well, it's Amish country. Um and did I write down where it was? No. Um, but it's Illinois, I think. Somewhere in that area. Or Indiana. It's Indiana. Excuse me. Not in Illinois, Indiana. And I did not actually go to this retreat, but there is a retreat or a couple of retreats there every year that I'm familiar with. And one of the ladies who goes to those retreats designed this quilt. And because it is Amish country, this was supposed to be an Amish mystery quilt. And if you know anything about Amish quilts, they're usually solid fabrics. None of this fancy fabric. <laughs> so unless it's for the English, we get fancy fabrics when they make quilts for us. But this particular fabric was called Victorian Wheeling. I used, I had a bunch of it when I decided to make this quilt and you can see I used a lot of different fabrics and there's a lot of different blocks. And in fact, that little, you know, well, no, I can just point. This one here is that block, same block I'm using in the pineapple. It's totally different in this particular thing. Um, yeah, do, do it a little zoom so we can look at some of the quilting. This was when I was, having fun learning how to do some quilting. I don't know if you can see it. I've seen this block there. Yeah. It's not my favorite block. <laughs> Connie, I have a question in the chat. Pardon me? I have a question in the chat. Okay. Uh, Christine wants to know what makes something a mystery quilt? Can you repeat that, Paul? Say again, please. Uh, Christine wants to know what makes something a mystery quilt? A mystery quilt is when you don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
you you get blocks, and in, in this particular case, she put out a block every couple of weeks, I think. And sometimes they're every week, sometimes they're every two weeks, sometimes they're every month. And you don't know what's gonna come next. So you just keep going and eventually you get enough blocks to make a quilt. And sometimes they give you a layout and sometimes you make up your own. And so, It's not going to work. I can't show you the quilting, but I was having fun doing all this quilting and I was just really getting into, um, I take, I, I'm trying to get better at quilting. I can piece pretty well. I'm tolerably good at applique, but quilting, I'm still, I'm still a work in progress. So I was having a lot of fun going through and trying different, a lot of different feathers going. This is all free motion quilting. So, and it was fun. We can see it, Connie. You're zoomed in. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll go to the next one. This was mm -hmm. my, this was a block of the month. It wasn't a mystery, but we did do a block a month. Um, but we knew all the blocks, except for <clears throat> I added a few <laughs> because I wanted a bigger quilt. So we started off, we were going to have 12, 12 blocks. I went with 16 so I could get it a little bit wider. Um, I changed this this block a little bit so it was there was some applique on there that I just didn't think worked well with my fabric and decided just to do some fancy quilting instead in those blocks. And this was fabric that I've been holding on to that was special fabric. And as I said, I've got lots of fabric and I'm trying to use what I have. So I pulled out some of my special fabric um, to, in 2019. Was this 2019? It will tell me on my handy dandy thing. Yes, 2019. Um, and I actually used it and I, I loved the, this border print. I fussy cut the border print so that I could have the same, well, there's two variations. Um, so they would be the same border on each of the blocks. And I use that same fabric, but a different colorway. Connie, can I, can we ask another question? Uh-huh. Yeah, Anne would like to know for the quilting, is that hand stitched or machine? This is machine stitched. Hmm. It's just beautiful. And so, I made, um, I use the same, this is the same fabric. This is just half a motif and, but a different colorway. I still have one more piece of fabric that's a different colorway. I loved that fabric. <laughs> what do you mean by a fussy cut? Oh, Paul was asked, he knows, but um, <laughs> he wanted to know what I mean by fussy cut. And that's when I take a particular element of the fabric and very carefully cut so that they're all the same in this particular case. In this quilt, I did more fussy cutting, but you can, because you can see in this particular block, which what can you zoom into that a little bit? Um, it's just a simple line patch, but I tried to use some of the bigger elements of the, you can't really see it, but I use some of the bigger, um, motifs in the fabric so it was a little seam in each of those greenish squares. And I did the same thing on the block above it so you have a little um... yeah we see that nice and clear that's gorgeous. So this was another um, sampler I do a lot of samplers samplers are where they have different blocks Lots of different blocks. So this has another quilt with 16 different blocks. And it looks like they're set on point, so, but they're not. It's just the way the sashing is. So the sashing is really big on this. It's six inches wide. And when I was making this, this was another case of using what I had and then adjusting the pattern to fit the amount of fabric I had. So, so this green, 
I, I didn't have enough of this green to do the whole setting blocks and everything. So I used a different green in the outside setting edges that complemented that green. And I like this quilt a lot. This quilt actually goes on the guest bedroom because it goes perfectly with the wallpaper in there. <laughs> Then we have this quilt. <laughs> this quilt um, I made last year. Um, I made a lot of quilts last year. Some I did from start to finish and some I finished um, from earlier starts and some I started and haven't finished yet. But this one I actually started and finished last year. This was another mystery quilt, except for I waited until all the blocks were out before I started it. So I knew what was coming. And as it happens, the fabric from the previous quilt and this fabric that I used in this quilt were actually the same box of fabric. I bought them in two different places. I bought fabric, I bought fabric in Fremont at a quilt store that no longer exists. And then we took a trip to Florida because Paul's from Florida. We went, we went back to Florida and because he's a wonderful husband, he takes me to quilt stores and <laughs> somewhere else <laughs> and, so, and I and I found a lot of this fabric there and and then I came home and I said oh that fabric I got in Fremont and the fabric I got here there's a lot of the same colors but they're also very different so that one had a very green fabrics and this one had a lot of the turqu turquoise aqua fabrics and especially in the big print there was a lot of aqua. So it turned into two different quilts. Well, it was supposed to be two different quilts. And again, I used fabric from that box fabric that I had that I bought several, but then I added from stash. So this um, iris fabric, I, I, I love irises. So I grabbed that from, I just have a very, had a very little piece of it, but I use that was left over from something else, but I used that there. And anyway, this was a, this is one of the quilts that we've been using quite a bit because it's got a wool batting and it's nice and big. And um, I just quilted it very simply in a, oops, In a so, Connie, simple. these are these are all washable. You said you yes. can just throw them in the wash. Yes. I think I'd be afraid to, but I guess they're sturdy. They're sturdy. <laughs> I make them sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> and if you quilt them enough, the the batting doesn't shift. Mm. You have to quilt them enough so the batting doesn't shift. This one is as close as I get pretty much to a block, just a quilt with the same block over and over and over again. Um, I call this Stars Upon Stars as a takeoff from Dr. Seuss's Stars Upon Mars or something like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm not, this one was lots of different stars. The block is the big star. The small stars are the sack in the sashing. And I, took a class that they said, bring a variety of floral fabrics. So I brought, bought a whole lot of floral fabrics because I didn't have any in my stash. So this, and I used a square foot of the fabrics in the class. And after that, I said, no more, I'm not buying any more fabrics for classes. And unless I know exactly what they're for. And but I did, I have made this quilt from that box of fabrics. I made another quilt from that box of fabrics and I probably have enough to make another quilt or two from that box. <laughs> this one is my blue and yellow quilt. Um, I finished this one last year. I started it quite a few years before that. In 2013. 
In 2013, um, a book came out called uh, The Lo Loyal Union Sampler. It was a Jennifer Cheverini book, quote book that she took. She'd written a book um, about union quilters well, and the families. And they made a sampler quilt as an auction quilt. And so this quilt pattern was based on that. Although she add, she didn't enumerate all the blocks in the book, but she did talk about a few of them. And I took it and instead of using Civil War fabrics, I used blue and yellow fabrics. And this came from Stash. I just rated my blue, bo blue boxes and my yellow bo boxes and my blue and yellow bo boxes. And, <sighs> And then I used, um, I set it a little different because instead of setting it all straight, which all these blocks would be squares or all on point where the blocks would be tw twisted 45 degrees, um, I alternated them, which meant when I was making them, I had to decide if they were gonna be a straight block or a point block because some of this fabric has directions. Sure. Like, that's no, okay. So like this one has a little tree. And you want the tree not to be going off to the side. And this one has houses. And this one has a teacup. And a teacup you could kind of go either way. But anyway, I had to think about it. And when I was putting it together, I really had to think about it. So I rearranged a few things as I was going along in the putting the um, bordering the blocks so I could get them to go fit together. Oh, Connie, before you move on, did you say these are Civil War era patterns? This was a, it's, it's not a Civil War era pattern, but it was a pattern that was designed based on a book based on the Civil War. Oh. <laughs> So that's and why the loyal union. She made up, and some of them are probably um, old enough to be in this old enough, but some of them are newer. So it's hmm. it's not strictly a Civil War era quilt. Hmm. And another blue one white cream quilt. This was another um, mystery. Uh, every month we got, I don't know, three, I think three different blocks, but we made each one twice of the six inch blocks. So we uh, made six blocks a month and then put it all together and it turned into this. <laughs> Not much else to say about that. This was a quilt show pattern. It was an edited sitar designed the quilt. And these are some of her signature fronds of whatever. She likes those. <laughs> she puts those in a lot of quilts. And I said when I was in the other room that I had a quilt on the bed that used those same, was the basis for those of the fabrics that I was using in the newest quilt. And this is it. So this was a, not quite sure what this was. <laughs> this was a quilt along. So there was um, a, a group of stores that got together and did what they called a patchwork party. And so I called this my Prairie Paisley Patchwork Party, but that's too hard to say. So I started just <laughs> calling it Quad P. <laughs> because they all start with <laughs> and so in the each store designed um actually each, each each store didn't design a block marty michelle designed all the blocks and she used these to you to utilize her templates which she's got these uh plastic templates that you can rotary cut around and rotary cutters are like very sharp pizza cutters that you use with rulers and not next to your fingers or you can get a really nasty cut. And 
because they're very sharp. And each, but each block, each store would sell a kit for their particular block. And I collected all the kits and there were 12 kits, but you can see there's more than 12 blocks in this quilt. So I designed this quilt, an electric quilt, and this, these blocks around the edges are the sampler blocks that came with the kits. And then I, added four more in the corners that I just, I didn't, I didn't design these blocks, but I pulled them from the encyclopedia of blocks. I have block encyclopedias that I love. Um, and then, um, so I, I use the same layout generally as, as these other blocks. So they would go together. And then I added the eight, the eight pointed stars and the feathered star in the middle. This was the first feathered star I ever did. And sure. And a feathered star is not an easy block. <laughs> and in fact, I was really afraid it wasn't going to go together right. And I set it aside for a while. And then finally, I got my gumption up and <laughs> finished it and it went together and I was very happy and got the quilt finished. And actually I did not quilt this quilt. I sent this one out to be quilted. So Jenny Michael uh, finally finished quilted this quilt for me. This was a big quilt. I didn't want to quilt a big quilt. It's huge. <laughs> that star is she amazing. She did a long job. Second size. Um, it's about 104 inches square. This quilt was a round robin. Round robins are when women get together and each one starts, does a center. So I did this center, center block. And then, and everybody does one. And then they mail it off to the next person in the rotation. So I would always get um, blocks and parts from one lady and I would send that with my addition on and send it to the next lady. So we had people, um, I got them from a lady in Texas. I sent them off to a lady in Georgia. She passed it down to a lady in Florida. Um, the lady in Florida sent it back up to Maine, and the lady in Maine um, she was she would um, send it to me. Now let's see how did that work. Let me look at my notes here. <laughs> kind of like a chain letter, only not annoying. Yeah, it was. It's just very like that. So. I would send them to Linda Bryant in Georgia. She would send them to Florida. She would send them to Maine. Um, she would send them to Texas. Texas would send them to me. So, uh, and in fact, in this particular round robin, it took us a while. We were supposed to take a month. We, we took a little bit longer than that for each of our sections. And one of them got lost. So she recreated her center and we recreated our work more or less. I could do mine pretty close to what I had because what I did whenever I got one is I would put it into electric quilt. Can you tell I love electric quilt? <laughs> so I, I would put it into electric quilt. So I had a record of, um, so it made it easier for me to design the next border because I would have sizes and everything. And you can see that some people would do little skinny borders that would bring it up to a size that was evenly divisible by what they wanted to do. Um, and so this was um, around Rob and I did the center, Linda did that, Sue did the, turned it on point and added something with, she had to use um, triangles, she had her points and she had to use squares and she, 
the next lady was doing something that was something that the person thought the recipient would like. And I, she knew I love Mariner's compasses. So she put Mariner's compasses in there. Besides, she loves Mariner's compasses too. And then Jenny uh, designed the last border with um, ocean waves. And I call this nautical stars. For a long time, I called it my swan quilt because we were the swan group in the round robin. This was a uh, CompuServe um, group of women, well, there were a few men, uh, who there was a quilting forum. And so we had several different groups that, that were all named after birds that were doing this round robin at the same time. Only different pods would be each doing their own thing. And this was quilted not by B, but by Paula Reed. And those are the two that I didn't quilt. So um, this was an, another one I finished um, last year, the year before. But I'd started it um, in 2000. So it took me a while to get around to finishing it. Originally, I was going to make it much bigger. When I was looking through boxes of stuff, I found these six blocks. And I said, you know, I am not going to make any more of these beautiful uh, applique blocks because I decided that appliqueing by hand through batik is hard. It's hard to needle. It's very dense fabric, so it's really hard to stick a needle through it. And my hands have gotten a little bit of arthritis as I've gotten older and um, wasn't gonna happen. So I just said, I'm just gonna make it a lap quilt or a wall quilt or whatever quilt. And so I put my pieces together. I had the white fabric all together with the blocks. And so I just put it all together and quilted it and made it into a wall hanging. And I love it. Um, it's, it hangs in our entryway a lot. Gorgeous. Right. Oops, Paul, can you kind of pull that? Let's see. There we go. This is my Christmas quilt. <laughs> this was um, another quilt along that I was leading on a, another, we, there was a group of quilters that were all fans of Jennifer Chevrolet's quilts. And she wrote, she's written a whole bunch of books. She wrote a series of books called The Elm Creek Quilters. And then she started branching out into historical fiction, and she wrote one on Mrs. Lincoln's dressmaker, Mrs. Lincoln's rival, Mrs. Lincoln's uh, sisters, which I just got out of the library. Um, uh, she wrote one on Jefferson Davis's wife. Uh, she wrote, no, she wrote one, well, she wrote a, that was, she, no, not her. She wrote one on uh, General Grant's wife, and she's written other ones too, John Wilkes Booth and more. Anyway, so she, um, she also designs quilts because she's a quilter. And she designed this one and it was in her book. And I saw the live one at a show once and I met her, her for the first time. And anyway, so I, I, I was in this group and I was kind of a co-moderator on the group and let a lot of the quilt along. So we, I would go through and I'd make sure the pattern was correct. And in this particular case, the pattern wasn't correct <laughs> all of the time. I forget which one was not right. But one of these blocks had errors. <laughs> this one, I think. So, um, so I, put out a rata and, and what you had to do and tips on how to make the blocks. And, um, and then I had fun quilting this one too. I had little snow flurries here in the center. I did shingles on the roof. I did snow falling in the sky and I did little icicles on the roof line. Well, other things. 
And this is the last one. This is my Dear Jane quilt. Jane Stickle was a woman who lived in the Civil War and made a quilt. And we're not sure if she made all the blocks or if other people made some of the blocks, but there's 169 squares that are all different. And there's 52 very weird shaped triangles. And there's also four kites in the corners. So there's 225 distinct and unique blocks in this quilt. And if you weren't good at small piecing, after this, after I did this one, I did some of those ones with six inch blocks. So it seemed huge by comparison. So these were four and a half inch blocks. And I made this, um, there was a Dear Jane group. Dear Jane was, is now trademarked by Brenda Papadakis. And it, she wrote a, um, the book on how to make this quilt. This quilt is actually in a museum, the original. And she managed to, she was a math major and drafted all these blocks out and put this book together. And she, she calls her book Dear Jane because she wrote letters to Jane, like she was writing letters to Jane um, th throughout the book. So she called it Dear Jane. And so um, there's a lot of these quilts out there and they all look different. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some of them are in colors. Some of them tried to be true to the colors that were in the original quilt. Um, the original quilt was, it was, so this setting I, is, would call, be called a trip around the world because you can see there's a center and then there's four gold and then there's the blue and then the red and then the pink and then the green and then the blue and then the red and then the pink and then the green, whatever. So. It, it, they go around in a, in a progression. Some people put this together, fabrics for each of those things. Some of them ignored the trip around the world. I looked at this quilt the first time I looked at this quilt. And I said, I'm not drafting, I'm not tracing all those patterns out. I don't like to trace. And tracing out 225 patterns was not my idea of a fun time. In fact, I had another friend who designed a quilt called Jane Was Nuts because she <laughs> looked at this quilt original and said, I'm not making those four and a half inch blocks. So she made a quilt with six inch blocks, which wasn't much better, but she left off the kites or the, tri the, tri the triangles and the kites. And I uh, wasn't going to make this quilt. I appreciated the quilt, but I wasn't going to trace all this. Then Electric Quilt came out with an F, <laughs> Electric Quilt again. And it, um, they had all the blocks already traced out. You could print them out. You could print out um, templates. You could print out paper piecing patterns. You could print out whatever you wanted to make this quilt easier to make. So I got the add-on and then I made the quilt. And instead of putting in 225 different fabrics, I decided to um, use the same fabric in each round. So my golds are all the same gold. My reds are all the same red. I did have a few times when I didn't do that. In this particular red round, uh, this block really called for a stripe. So I used a stripe here and also the same stripe here in the same round and also over there. So I used it three times. But other than that, it's pretty much uh, all the same fabric. And in the, in the border, I decided to use blues and shades of blues, which ranged into purple um, and aqua and instead of whatever. And in the original, these kites were all, or tri triangles were all different fabrics. I said, no, I'm gonna make them all the same and I'm gonna add on an extra border to make this big enough for my bed but I did do the scallops on the edges, which you can't really see there, but they're scallops. And scallops are not fun to do. 
<laughs> finding a stall is not fun. So, but I did it and I've done it a couple of times and I don't know that I'll ever do it again, but it called for scallops and I, I went for it. And I also quilted this myself. Okay, that is stunning. So That's questions and answers. <laughs> Yeah, we have a couple of questions. Boy, that's just, I just keep looking at it. There's so much to see in it. Well, can we position you so we can see you as well for the Q&A? Okay, why don't I go back to the other camera? Okay. Or we can just take, go to switch cameras. Uh, here, and we'll just switch cameras. Yeah, if anybody has questions, feel free to type them into the chat. Oh, the rest of my, <laughs> now all the lights that you can see in the, in the bed is so that we can um, <laughs> see the quilts. And my wool quilt, this is a wool quilt on the wall. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've got a few questions that we can't really see. I, I wonder if it's maybe better to go back in the other room. Yeah, I'll go back to the other room. On that question, what uh, what size were the blocks in the last quilt? Which quilt is that? The, the Dear Jane? I think so. That's yeah. Athena wants to know that from the from the chat. The the very last quilt with the smaller blocks. Four and a half inches. Thank you. Yeah, I know most of you have your cameras off and that's fine, but if you'd like to turn your cameras on and ask your questions live, that's great. Or you can just go ahead and type them into the chat. I know there's one question from the chat from Judy. Uh, Judy was curious to know, Connie, how did you end up with a quilt that so many quilt artists worked on? Oh, and you're muted. I just realized. There we go. Now you can hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I was in a CompuServe um, group. When, when we moved to Colorado, Paul was in this larger group of, and because he was in the woodworking section, but he saw that there was a quilt section. So he hooked me up with that. So I got online and started talking to quilters all over. Um, I guess it was, I don't know when it was. Maybe it was in 91 when we moved back from Colorado back to California because I was losing all my girlfriends and I was working in a group of all men. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have a whole lot in common to chat about. So, <laughs> so, um, so I got online with these women, um, mostly women, as I said, there were a few men and uh, they're all over the world. We had members in Russia. They were, she was a um, diplomat's wife. We had a lot in Scandinavia that they learn English as a second language quite a bit over there. Um, and then we had England, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, Canada, uh, Mexico. Not too many from South America, if any. Well, yeah, Marilyn was in South America. So South America too. <laughs> so all over the world. And so I got hooked up with those people and we did quite a few swaps and um, we did a couple round robins. That was one of them. Fascinating. Well, another <laughs> question in the chat from Anne who asks, I notice you use light backgrounds for all your quilts. Do you ever make a quilt with a black background? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in fact, the one on the wall that was the wool quilt was, well, it was dark brown, um, but yeah, that was a back, black, dark background. Um, I don't have any handy backlink um, because, well, it's not handy, <laughs> but, um, but yes, I do use black backgrounds on occasion. In fact, that black is very effective when you're using jewel tone fabrics, and I really like it. Very nice. Christy would like to know what machine do you use for the quilting? Um, well, for the quilting, over the course of time, my machines have changed. So 
my, um, when I first started quilting, I did it by hand. Uh, and then I got um, a Bernina. And I got another Bernina and another Bernina and another Bernina. <laughs> We're talking uh, 30 years, <laughs> you know. So it's not like you get a new machine every year. Uh, but a, a couple of years ago, I got a Bernina 765. And that's the one I use now mostly for piecing and some of that quilting. The Dear Jane, I quilted on a Bernina 630, which is a very small throat. It's, it's not big at all. And then I've also, but just recently I got a Bernina Q16, which is a sit down uh, quilting machine. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't do any of those fancy stitches. It's, you, you have to pull the fabric through. There's no feed dog. But it's got a 16 inch throat and it's really nice for quilting. So I got 15 quilts quilted last year. So yeah. <laughs> so that was a very good idea. <laughs> yes. Although some of them, a lot of them got quilt. I got peace early in the year. And then after I got the Q16 around August, I started quilting up a storm and got most of them quilted in that last half year. Well, not a very typical year. Oh, I think uh, Paul is showing us the blood, the one with the dark blue background. That's the wool quilt, yes? Yeah, that's got the dark background. Yeah. Dark but I can't see it, so. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm basting one now that's got a dark background. And, um, but it's on the basting table being basted. Yeah, because I still have to base them with the Q16. It doesn't have rollers or it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't, you have to base it first. So. Very interesting. Well, we are getting close to 9.30, so we're going to be Oh wrapping. my goodness. I know, I know where time flies. This has just been fascinating. I love the, as I, I'm not a quilter, I, I didn't know about the tradition of a bed turning, and I, I loved that. I loved the, the unveiling and the peeling back of the different layers and the stories behind them. Mm -hmm. really lovely. I see uh, Anne Yonan said, I have to go, but thank you so much for sharing your artistry with us. Simply gorgeous. You are talented and creative. Oh, thank you extra thanks to Paul for being just a super trooper in the background there and thank you all so much for being here this was uh, one other thing I would like to say um, yeah. I don't know if you mentioned it before but I do have a Flickr account and I put a lot of my quotes up there yeah wonderful so. thank you again Connie what a treat to get to uh -huh. see you thank you life. for asking <laughs> I love I love sharing my quilts so this was okay <laughs> <laughs>